Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about collisions in multiple dimensions. Specifically, let's do a problem where we have a two-dimensional collision. In this problem, Bert strikes a cue ball of mass 0.17 kilograms, giving it a velocity of 3 meters per second in the x-direction. When the cue ball then strikes the 8 ball of mass 0.16 kilograms, previ previously at rest, the 8 ball is deflected 45 degrees from the cue ball's previous path. The cue ball is deflected 30 degrees in the opposite direction. Find the velocity of the cue ball and the 8 ball after the collision. All right, the first thing I'm going to do in a problem like this is I'm going to set up my momentum table, beginning with the x direction. Since I don't know the velocity of the balls after the collision, I'll call the velocity of the cue ball after the collision v sub c and the 8 ball after the collision v sub 8. Then I'm going to have to use a little bit of trig over here after the collision in order to figure out the x components of these balls after the collision. But let's start by filling in what we can here for this problem. First off, the cue ball before the collision has a mass of 0.17, so 0.17 times its velocity, 3 meters per second, is going to give us an x momentum before of 0.51 kilogram meters per second. The 8 ball's at rest, so its momentum beforehand is 0, and the total momentum before the collision of our system, 0.51 plus 0, is just going to be 0.51 kilogram meters per second. After the collision, we still have the same mass on our 8 ball, 0.17 kilograms, but now it's times the unknown velocity of the cue ball, and since it's the x component of that, it's times the cosine of 40 degrees. For the 8 ball after the collision, its mass, 0.16 kilograms, times V8 cosine 45 degrees. So our total momentum after the collision is going to be the sum of these two, 0.17 Vc cos 40 degrees, plus 0.16 V8 cos 45 degrees. So there's our uh, table for momentum in the x direction. Now let's do the same thing in the y direction. As we look over here in the y direction, the cue ball, the y momentum before must be zero. There's no motion, there's no velocity in the y direction. Same with the eight ball, so the total momentum in the y direction before the collision must be zero. Now after the collision, we've got the mass of the cue ball, 0.17, times the velocity of the cue ball, times the sine of negative 40 degrees. And for the 8 ball, this is still 0.16 kilograms its mass times V8 times the sine of 45 degrees. So the sum, the total Y momentum after the collision, must be the sum of these two, 0.17 Vc sine negative 40 degrees plus 0.16 V8 sine 45 degrees. All right, so now that I've got my momentum tables, it's time to, di time to dive into the math and the algebra. So let's slide down here a little bit. And as we start with this, let's take a look at the x side first. So over here on the x side, we know that the total momentum before must equal the total momentum after. So 0.51 must be equal to 0.17 Vc cos 40 degrees plus 0.16 V8 cos 45 degrees. Or if I go a little bit further with that, I can multiply the 0.17 times the cosine 40 degrees to get some coefficients that'll make this a little bit neater. And I have 0.51, again, kilogram meters per second, our units stay the same, must equal 0.17 times cos 40. That's going to be 0.13 Vc plus, on the right-hand side, 0.113 V8. So there I've got one equation from my y momentum, from my x momentum table. Let's try doing the same thing over here for the y momentum. The total momentum before must be equal to the total momentum after by the law of conservation of momentum. Therefore, we can say that 0 must be equal to 0.17 times Vc sine negative 40 degrees plus 0.16 V8 sine 
45 degrees. All right, can simplify that a little bit too. 0 equals 0.17 times the sine of negative 40 is going to be negative 0 0.109 VC plus 0.16 times sine 45 is going to be 0.113 times V8. I now have two equations and two unknowns. I can solve a system of equations. In order to solve this one, the way I'm going to start is I'm going to solve the y momentum equation for VC. So if 0 equals negative 0.109 VC plus 0.113 V8, I can rearrange that by adding 0.109 VC to both sides to say that 0.109 VC must equal 0.113 V8. And dividing both sides by 0.109, I find out that VC equals about 1.04 V8. All right, I can now take this equation for VC and substitute into the equation for conservation of momentum over here. If VC is 1.04 V8, I can plug that in over there. Let's give it a try and see what we get over here. We have 0.51 equals 0.13 times 1.04 V8 plus 0.113 V8 little bit of rearrangement here, 0.13 times 1.04 plus 0.113, I get that 0.51 equals about 0.248 V8, or solving for V8 by dividing both sides by 0.248, I come up with the velocity for the 8 ball of 2.06 meters per second. Now that I know V8 is 2.06 meters per second, I can take that and I can put it back in my equation over here. So VC equals 1.04 V8, which is 1.04 times 2.06 meters per second. And I come up with a final value for the velocity of my cue ball of 2.14 meters per second. So I have the velocity of my cue ball after the collision and the velocity of my 8 ball, 2.06 meters per second and 2.14 meters per second, using the law of conservation of momentum and, of course, making sure I keep separate my x and my y coordinates, my x and y components. Hopefully this gets you started with analyzing collisions in multiple dimensions. If you need more help or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.